Good morning, Tallahassee. It's time to wake up War Chant on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Now, here's your host, Aslan Hajavandi. Hello, everybody. Welcome on into the program called Wake Up War Chant. I'm Aslan. He's Corey Clark. Thanks so much for being here. As always, the show as always, brought to you by the fine folks at For the Table Hospitality. Three properties over at College Town. You already know all of them, but I'll say it one more time. Central, Township, and Madison Social. Those places would have been rocking if there was a, a huge monumental victory in Dote Campbell State and the likes of what we saw last night uh, with the basketball team, Corey, eh? You're right, man. That's a huge game. Huge win. Woo! That makes up for the losses uh, to Clemson on the football field, doesn't it? Oh, for sure. Big Clean win. slate. Yeah, man. Uh, I think that's that's at least three in a row. They beat them, they beat Clemson both times last year, including that game on Super Bowl Sunday. It was like a forty-five point drubbing. Um, but yeah, man, that was a good win. That was a that was a really good win. And I thought they were dead in the water, man. I thought they were done. Um, yeah. Not just because they were down eighteen. I mean, that's a really good start, a really good reason <laughs> to think somebody's done. But there was no life. There was nothing going on with that team. They were they didn't seem to be playing with any energy. Certainly no emotion. They looked you know, kind of down and tired. And then for whatever reason, it just clicked. Terrence Mann's made some buckets. They got some steals. And then all of a sudden, Clemson, the game pressure got to Clemson a little bit, I thought. And uh, Florida State was able to really kind of steal one. I mean, that was, a, that was a really a gut check win and a big win for this pro, for this team and this program. Let me be a pretentious radio host and talk down to my audience and, and tell the people of Tallahassee they should be disappointed by the turnout that they had at the Civic Center. But then let me coach you back up. Let me love you back up and say that the second half was absolutely fantastic. The energy that 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 arena brought wasn't big. It wasn't a big crowd, uh, but it was loud in the second. It was loud in the second half when the team got look. You know, the, the, and I'm again. This isn't patronizing at all. It's the truth. This isn't really a basketball town. It's not a basketball fan base. It's a great football town, great football fan base, and a pretty darn good baseball fan base. Basketball, they feed off the team. As opposed to the other way around, you know what I mean? At a basketball right. school, the crowd tries to will a team to a W, like in a Lexington or a Cameron or Chapel Hill, uh, Lawrence, Kansas. Here, the crowd can get really loud and into it and become a real sixth man when the team gives them something to cheer about. In that first half, man, they didn't have anything to cheer about. It was just an ugly, ugly – if if Clemson hadn't have fouled Savoy – shooting two three-pointers, I mean, they're, they're up by 17 and a half. I mean, it was just a, it was an ugly, ugly first half, but, and the crowd was dead because the team was dead. And then when the team got life, the crowd really kind of, I thought, carried them the rest of the way. I'm sure the team probably expected to, to come out onto a floor that, I don't, I, mean, I don't know, maybe they're used to it, but I, I, I would figure as a competitor, you realize the stakes of the game, you would realize that maybe your town would come out and rally around you, and that probably didn't help out. Plus, it was Valentine's Day, so, and not to go all 1960s on everybody out there, but I figure, I mean, most of, a lot of guys in the crowd were with their significant other. I'm sure you're pretty happy that your significant other is totally cool with spending Valentine's Day watching a basketball game. So you're not going to get all that crazy and lathered up. But like you said, when the basketball team gave them something to, to cheer about, the, the crowd really switched the, the, the entire atmosphere of that, that arena, and then Clemson kind of... Yeah, they got really tight. Oh. Now, they made some big plays in the second. They got, I think, a seven-point lead with a couple minutes left, honestly. And then Kofor in a three, and they, they willed themselves to tie Hell. it in. Trent Forrest was really good. But, yeah, I mean, I think Valentine's had something to do with it. Um, but, you know, I thought it'd be really – wouldn't it be romantic to go to the Civic Center on a Wednesday night? So you're there at seven. Game The game lasted a little too long. You can still go get a late dinner somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and then still have a fun and fun nightcap. Surely at one of the for the table groups yeah, in man, College Town. Those things are open late. Uh, all, your fast food place, just sit in the parking lot. I mean, there's a lot of ways to make Valentine's Day romantic. Um, and I just you know, listen to this podcast maybe while you're while you're with your significant other on Valentine's. They're just. I would have thought it had been a really nice date night, but I guess not. I guess people like to go to fancy restaurants on Valentine's Day. <sighs> Come on, get it together, everybody. But yeah, so I mean, this kind of went. I mean, I mentioned. The fact I, I didn't. Did you have think, a good Valentine's Day, by the way? Did anything anything romantic happen in old Aslan's life on Valentine's Day? No, just got got punched out by a by a, by a sports information person. That's that's only that's oh, all. Oh, well, that's yeah. gonna happen. My heart got broken by that, but otherwise uh, everything is honky dory. I mean, I mentioned it on the show, but in no way did I think it coming out that way. But I just I figured that you know you mentioned that. Clemson was eminently beatable. We'll talk about the game in just a second. I okay. want to get a right, get an stop. opinion from you. Stop, <laughs> stop, uh, scratch the record. So I mentioned yesterday that uh, me and my girlfriend 
we I, well, I didn't mention how long we've been together. It's like eight months. All so right. this is our first Valentine's. <coughs> so I was going to get some. So I didn't know her. I know where she works, but I didn't know her office number. Like, so I couldn't yeah, okay. get flowers delivered because gotcha. I didn't know where they would be delivered. And it's a really big building. So on Valentine's Day yesterday, I went and got the flowers. And I left them at the front desk and said, hey, could you tell her that? She's got to let her know that these are here. Can you get these, her? And they're like, oh, yeah, sure. But I didn't have a pen in my car, so I didn't get a card. Corey. So I didn't have a card. I didn't have a message. But I thought the flowers would be enough. And she was very thankful, said thank you very much. But I didn't know who they were from because there was no card. And I thought, well, and I think she was kidding. I think she, she 99% she kind of knew who they were from. Right. She's like, I didn't know if I had a secret admirer because you didn't sign them. So she was kind of giving me grief yeah. for not Come yeah, on, you got to finish the drill, Corey. You got you, the card, especially with your wit, with your wit and, and your way with the written word. Right. That little card is just, it's the cherry. It's everything, man. It's the sprinkles. It's the jimmies on the Sunday. Right. You got to finish the drill. Th- I that's thought, not th- but I drill. thought the flowers were the, were the thing. That was the gist. That was the message. That was the romance with but the still, roses. You still want to say like, hey. Hey, you, made, girl. you made the last eight months great. Thanks so much. You know, this, you Here's know, here's to eight more months. Write something, roses right. are red, something, cause that's how, that's what sets it all off, man. That's the, that's the coup de gras. Yeah. So she was, uh, she wasn't upset. I don't want to paint it that way, but she thought maybe there could have been a little more effort into the card because there was no effort into a card at all. But I'm like, man, the flowers are nice, right? She's like, oh, they're beautiful. They're great. But, you know, I didn't know who they were from. Well, she, she knows just, what she was getting. I mean, yeah. This, you're not, she you're, knows what she signed up for. You're not detail with this. oriented, yeah. yeah, man. Like you, you make up for it. Like you said, you take a step back on February 14th. You let the rest of the populace catch up to you. Oh, today it's going to be the most romantic day of her life. Boom. The most. It's going to be the most, most romantic February 15th of her life for sure. There you go. So, anyway, I'm sorry. I just no, wanted to get your opinion on that. No. You think it was a bad move on my part? Yeah, you got. You got to put the card probably in. amateur hour the there. Because I'm bit. sure I've been doing so, it long enough. There's so many. Known. I'm sure you guys have. Exchange so many text messages and you have inside jokes amongst you too that if you would right. put something like that in the car that would just like it would have melted everything the heart and she went oh like you know and then the, he's yeah. really thinking of me yeah yeah the yeah. flowers were the flowers were nice but I probably didn't do I didn't finish yeah you're right you know, you I didn't should finish do, the drill you know you should, you should just send her a text message with like this is what should have been in the card like I whispered in your ear next time I see you or something like hey, that. hey girl thinking of you yeah boom you my girl yeah you my dog. Something Sign like at Sea Dog. Sign at Sea Dog. Anyway, so sorry about that. Anyway, go ahead with your. Uh, go ahead with your. I, inter- I so rudely interrupted yeah. you, but I wanted to get a no, I mean, quick I, Valentine's take from you. You know, I mentioned the fact that I I didn't. You know, it's always you know get a get a good start. Every game, every sport, any scenario, you always want to get a good start. I just didn't feel like the the first six eight minutes of that game was going to dictate anything. But when you get down eighteen points, I was like, well, that take was really stupid because they came out flat and they're not going to be able to dig themselves out of this. But then, like you mentioned, I mean, Terrence Mann, you gave him a little run in the show, but it was, it was Phil, man. Phil Kofi yeah. making tough shots. Yeah. Because at, at certain point in the game, I mean, good grief, it felt like there were so many, I don't know, man, just there was turnovers, things were getting sloppy, that I don't know how many inbound plays you really have. And Florida State was struggling to get the they, – they, you either got to have good sets or you have to have guys who can make tough shots. And they weren't running really good sets, it felt like. I mean, they are yelling at each other, spacing, spacing, and nobody uh, was really getting good looks. I mean, and Phil Kofi – Got some really tough shots to go. And then yeah. Trent Forrest, who Trent Forrest sneakily makes teams have to earn it getting across the half court. Like you He know, does, you're right. You know, he, little things like that, I don't know if those add up towards the end of a game and, and just wear on an opposing point guard or whoever the ball carrier is going to be bringing the ball up the court. But Trent Forrest, I mean, he was trying to be all moss. But, dude, the, if you're playing against Florida State and NCAA basketball and you're like a Clemson guy, you throw your controller against the wall – when Trent Forrest pulls off that spin move to give yeah, Florida State man, the go ahead in move. overtime, man, it was fantastic. So uh, t- to see it play out that way was not the way we in, uh, obviously saw Clint c- coming out. But hey, man, we, we both said they were going to win. So cool. yeah, we nailed it. We we handicapped that nailed perfectly. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I actually tweeted about it right about halftime. Was that normally at home, Florida State plays really well in the first half, gets a nice ten twelve double digit lead, and then holds on for dear life in the second half and plays not very well. This time they flipped it. They completely changed the complexion of the game. Um, talking to Hamilton afterwards, um, he said what they wanted to do, uh, and this wasn't in the press conference. This was out in the hallway where, you know, you plebes were still right, in there in, right. the, in the room, and I was just talking the to the The big-time scribes, yeah. the, the honorable and, scribes. Um, he said what they wanted to do 
was Brownell really tries to coach every possession. He's got a thousand plays that they run. He so we couldn't even practice them all. A, he is a very aggressive, intense coach. Well, yeah, he is. But he he call he wants them to run plays all the time. And what Hamilton and the staff decided to do was that jump pressure where they'd throw two guys at the ball handler to make them speed it up and take Brownell out of the game where it was the Clemson players having to think on the fly and do their own thing instead of running plays that they practice all the time. And it worked. I thought the Clemson kids, they're really good, man. And those guards are, are some of them are ice cold. They're really nice players, but they, they kind of panicked when it got, when it got close. They, they had some really bad possessions. And at the end, Florida state just made really one extra play. The kid missed the free throw from Clemson after the horrendous, horrendous, baseball pass that to was the, intercepted to the smallest the foul. guy on the court that's the that's the thing is like Jeez. number one i don't think it was a foul i don't think walker fouled him but why are you throwing a baseball pass football pass football pass baseball whatever you want to call it it's a baseball <laughs> throw right um why are you throwing that to cj well literally the smallest guy on your team yeah that was kind of bizarre you would have thought maybe somebody that could jump would have been down there so uh, you know real out you know not yeah. a real athlete cj walker's an <laughs> athlete a, a, you know, a, a little more rangy, Forest, rangy. Somebody that could maybe tip it to himself. But anyway, it worked out. Florida State got a really nice win. 81-79 in overtime over number 11 Clemson. In the process gives Leonard Hamilton career win number 500. So shout out to Coach Ham. Uh, when we come back, we will talk a little bit more about this game, I'm sure, at some point. We also need to talk about a trend that's not good for us and uh, our business. We'll talk about next here. It's Wake Up War Chant, ESPN 97.9 Tallahassee. You're locked in to Wake Up War Chant on 97.9 ESPN Radio. Welcome on back. I'm Aslan. He's Corey Clark. This is Wake Up Board Chant ESPN 97.9 Tallahassee brought to you by For the Table Hospitality. Three locations in College Town, Township, Central, Madison Social. Go to either of them. You won't be disappointed. I guarantee. So, Corey. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, also, if you can, go on iTunes. Go to Google Play. Leave a, a review. Preferably five stars. Probably. Yeah, this is Florida State, man. This is Lord Chant. This is Florida State. This is Tallahassee. This is Corey Clark. We only want Corey Clark for sure. We only want five stars. This is a five star show with five star talent, and you need to rate it as such. That's my. That's Boom. my. That was that was a hell of a sales. Exactly sales right. Pitch, man. So do it. That's my directive. You might need to get hired by every major Division One college football program to help bolster their attendance. Apparently, so the the whole big story that was posted yesterday. Uh, after we went off air was this, uh, I think the Washington Post Post uh, had a story on it, but I also saw CBS Sportsline mm-hmm. and Dennis Dodd. Uh, basically, this is five years in a row now that attendance has gone down in FBS football. This is the second, I think, largest year-over-year drop uh, in history ever since they started recording attendance back in, in the mid-40s. I think from 1982 to 83 was the largest one year drop off ever i think it equated to an average of maybe 1400 i think 1409 was the actual number so that 1400 less people have attended the average football game so i don't know if that it's a reason to panic it's something to talk about on february 15th though i guess right i mean i yeah because you wonder i mean i just can't imagine it's ever gonna did, swing did we, back up did we experience a golden age of football well, I, the golden age of attendance, maybe for sure. Uh, you know, I certainly liked college football twenty years ago more than I do now. I, it, it, there's a lot of factors into that. Um, the the ridiculous salaries. You know, half of Ohio State's coaching staff now oh, is making geez. over three quarters of a million dollars. Well, Shiano's getting one and a half. I, I think. mean, it's it's remarkable. It's incredible. I and it, and I will say this real quick. This is maybe a topic for another day. There is a bubble, and it's coming, and it's going to be like the how colleges are going to even the Ohio maybe not the Ohio states because they make so much money, but the teams that are trying to compete with Ohio State can't afford to do this. They are going to start losing money, especially as the as the attendance drops, and when the attendance drops, administrations are going to start charging more for tickets, and that's going to make them drop more. It's just how it's going to work, and I think the TV deals are going to become less and less as people start cutting cords. Yeah. More and more that's happening where people are just streaming now and they don't have cable. All that stuff is going to align where we're going to see just how ridiculous these contracts are. And it's not just Jimbo with the 75 million. Heck, Willie Taggart's making 5 million. This coaching staff is making about 10 million annually to coach amateurs. It's just not 
sustainable. With that said, I don't think um, I don't think it's ever going to swing back up where people are going to start going to the games again. Because the reason I think that people aren't going to games are reasons that are just going to get more and more um, <laughs> reasonable. Like number one, sometimes it's really hot. Sometimes there's other really good games on that you might want to keep track of. You go sit on a uncomfortable metal bleacher, unless you're in the Champions Club, by the way. Then you've got those really nice seats not to sit in. Um, <laughs> but you're in, you're inside. The sun bleach yeah, seats. That nobody sits in. But yeah. those are nice. And I think what, what's going to happen is, especially these big-time schools, I think, man, are going to have to at some point put those kind of seats all over the stadium. Not the ridiculous chair backs that people can rent. Yeah. I mean, they're spending a lot of money to sit on metal bleachers. It's going to have to be where you're going to have to make people want to get out of their home to come watch these games. And I I don't know how that happens other than to make it as comfortable as possible, give them a lot of uh, amenities, give them more bathrooms, give them maybe waiters in the aisles, something to make it re- something to make it more alluring to come to a game because I do think it's just going to go it's going to keep going down. Especially, you said it's five years in a row. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, what would what would change to make it go back up? Stadiums are gonna have to get smaller. See, you've been in the game so long. Well, let's. Hey, man, come on. I'm only. I'm, saying, I'm only you, 28. Can you remember when you didn't? When you had to actually pay to attend a sporting event? What were the things that would prevent you from going to a game? Oh yeah. Well, no. I I, I actually had <laughs> Hawk season tickets a couple years ago. Um, well, traffic, but that's different. But, um, you know, that's what I'm saying. I think it's for a football game, there would be the opponent more than anything, probably. I think the hotel prices here are outrageous, and I feel really bad for out of town people that have to pay two night minimums at those crazy rates. But I, you know, I guess that's capitalism. That's America. I don't know what you can do about it, but those are crazy rates, and they have been for 30 years. I think that keeps people away in this day and age. And I think the ability to, to get a 70 inch, Flat screen in HD, where you get to drink beer for not free, but it's <laughs> you can buy a six pack for eight bucks yeah. instead of eight bucks for one beer. They don't even sell beer, Doke, do they? they do yeah, yeah, unless in the Champions Club. All that makes it not for so long. College football has gotten away with just selling the the game itself and not necessarily the amenities. Well, now it's gotten to the point where you've got to make it. Uh, you've got to help with the amenities. It's like we talked about uh, yesterday at lunch. Man, I don't go to a movie theater now unless I get one of those big, sweet recliners. Yeah, I'm not going to one of those movie theaters where you just sit in a normal seat. I won't do it. And I think again, as we as we just keep going in this with the technological advances, I think it's just going to get more and more hard to convince people harder to convince people to go sit on these really uncomfortable metal bleachers. Where if you happen to be by a, let's just say wide person, wide person, yeah. it's really uncomfortable. And it's also it hot be. out there. It's I mean, hot. I mean, I don't know. I'm 35. I told you I was 34. I'm actually 35. Sorry about That's lying weird. to you. Yeah, I'm no. actually not 28 either. <laughs> um, so those aren't things that really factor into. A lot of my friends will say things like, "Man, it's hot," and I'm like, well, "You've lived in Florida your whole life. Like everything we do is always hot. I don't know why this affects our." As a guy who's from the Tampa area. It's geography. It's first and foremost for me, geography. If there was a high-speed rail line that could get you from Tallahassee to Tampa in two hours, I would, I'd probably have bought right. season tickets. But it's, that's a, that's a, if there's one from Miami to Tallahassee that ran, or so, and I'm not saying let's invest all this money, billions of dollars in infrastructure to help the attendance of a, of a football team. I'm just well, saying we, we need be... high-speed rail people. We do. The airlines have... You're being sarcastic, but I think no, we I'm do. No, I'm not. I definitely think we do. You know me. I don't fly anyway. Right, right. And we bailed out the airlines. They make us pay for baggage now. Yeah. It's ridiculous. They don't give you any food anymore. They, you know, they're they delayed half the time. If they had a real competitor in high-speed rail, then you know that, could, that might make them up their game a little bit. But we haven't made any advances with trains in 100 years. Yeah, like train is but train. You're, when you're talking about getting to Tallahassee and how hard it is, that's just a Florida State-specific thing. But this is across college football this that this is, is happening. Right. And it's not just because you can't get to the games. There's something going on where college football, people I think would rather watch it at home than go and experience uh, the atmosphere, especially if the tickets are, you know, the tickets keep getting more and more expensive. And, you know, the product, you might argue, isn't as good as it used to be. I don't know. I don't think it is, but I'm kind of an old school guy. I'm sure there are plenty of people. You don't think so? No, I just, I, I, I just like college football more 10, 15, 20 years ago. I, I don't, I can't really explain it. I just, uh, I, I did. And I, I don't quite know why. 
but I did. And, just because um, it was newer than, I mean, not newer, but just it's it's 10, 15 year, more years. It's maybe lost its luster. I mean, some, maybe nothing I, stays gold forever, Pony Boy. And it wasn't innocent back then, and I was younger back then, so certainly more naive, but it just seemed more innocent. It seemed closer to high school football than pro football. Now it's essentially pro football. I know they're not getting paid. But they live in these ridiculous – I mean, they, they have incredible facilities, except, you know, Florida State, right. obviously. They don't have Terrible. any facilities here. Ew. Um, and the coaches, the coaches are getting paid more than NFL coaches. It's just the money has kind of tarnished it a little bit for me. Not a lot. It's still by far my favorite sport. But I'm not completely head over heels in love with it when I used to, and I, like I used to be. And I don't know, maybe other people are the same way. Or maybe it's just a matter of, man, I don't want to pay that kind of money, especially if you don't have great home games that year. You know, maybe I just don't want to go. I don't want to go spend a Saturday watching you play Wake Forest and when I can go watch, you know, USC play Notre Dame or whatever the big game is that weekend. Maybe it's the fact that it's always Alabama. It's always going to be too, Alabama. Man. You that, were, that everyone's too. chasing a, a ghost. Almost yeah. everyone's chasing this unreachable sort of bar that's been set. I don't know how much of that factors into things. It's. I still love the I love the game. Um, the, the bizarre thing in that story was so they're talking about the fact that now a lot of stadiums, like you mentioned, they're having to go. Also, and, Wi-Fi and, is terrible. Right. Stadiums have to figure out something to do with their Wi-Fi. They have to yeah. because it's terrible in this day and age. In 2018, people aren't going to want to sit there and not be able to get on their phone. They're attached to their phones. And you can't just take that away from them for three and a half hours. And then the scores that you put on the board are always 90 minutes behind. They're yeah. never up to date. Never. Um, any stadium, though. That's, that, that's not a Florida yeah, State that's specific thing. That's stadium. just any stadium. They're not up to date. People want to keep up with what's going on. They can actually watch other games on their phone, but you won't let them because your Wi-Fi is so terrible. And trust me, that's not just a Florida State thing. That's You read it all yeah. across the country where people have trouble with Wi-Fi in stadiums. But can't we just go out for three hours and just talk amongst – our 80,000 closest friends and just enjoy something and not be on it. But as a college football phone. fan, you're, you are, it, it's, you are curious how the other, the rest of the country is going. That's the beauty of college oh, no, football. Yeah. You worry about the other teams and what they're I'm doing. I'm being devil's advocate. I'm checking my phone. Probably. I don't know. I've been, I, I can't remember last, I was a, a fan at a game, um, probably the Ole Miss game. Ole, no, I came to Tallahassee for the Clemson game 2016. So, I don't remember checking my phone, though. That was the game, though. Was but the if game. you're at Florida State watching Florida State play... Charleston Southern. Charleston Not Southern or Sanford, one. and you want to see what's going on in another big game, you right. want to check your phone and you can't keep up with it. Or you can't text someone and say, hey, wasn't that crazy? Or what happened on that play? Was that a good call? You can't. It's hard to do any of that at most of these stadiums. And I think that... Does, you mean, look at the NFL stadiums. They're basically like... They want to make it a living room environment for all those people. Yeah. So we just complained about something. But we're going to give you solutions because we're not politicians. We're solutions providers. Yeah, He's Corey. I'm Aslan. It's Wake Up War Chant. Coming right back after this. Warchant.com, your ultimate seminal sports source, knows now is a time of true excitement for Knoll fans everywhere. That's why Warchant.com is especially proud to announce its newest team member, senior writer Corey Clark. Combine Corey's expertise with owner Gene Williams and managing editor Iris Chaffel, and Warchant.com boasts nearly 50 years of experience covering the team you love. It's tagger time in Tallahassee, and that means now is the perfect time to sign up for your free 30-day trial. From National Signing Day to March Madness, Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. He's Corey on Aslan. It's Wake Up Warchant. Welcome back to the program, ESPN 97.9 Tallahassee. This show brought to you by For the Table Hospitality, College Town, Three Properties, Central, Township, Madison Social, Go Eat, be merry, prosper, enjoy life. Also, we are uh, unveiling something here new. If you're a subscriber to Warchant.com and a uh, tribal council member, or shoot, anybody in that regard, if you can just get on the tribal council, if you're a premium member, uh, we're going to start the Renegade Express. So every week we'll post a thread on the tribal council soliciting your questions, feedback. We'll read all this stuff live on the internet and... We also have a feedback line, if you want to write this down, 850-792-5730. That's 850-792-5730. It's posted on WarChan. But basically, you can, call that, line. you can call that number, leave a voicemail, and if it's up to snuff, it's got to be strong. you got to come strong with it. You can't ramble on for three minutes. Now, is it a question, or are they going to comment on the what we're doing Anything. on the show? They can ask a question, and we'll oh. play it. We'll play it. We'll play your question live. You can be like, yo, this is Mike in Defun Defuniac Springs. i got a question. We'll play it. Hey, it's uh, Steven in, in Bozeman, Montana. i got a question. We'll play it. 
Um, if it's cool, obviously. But yeah, you can go on the message board, post your question. We'll uh, we'll delve into them on Friday. You can also, again, you can call in, leave some heat on the uh, feedback line, and we'll just be we'll, nice, man. We'll go ahead We're and pipe all nice. In. If you, you we know you like us. We we're we're very likable, and this is a really good show. We get it. But if you have something negative to say, you know, sometimes it's okay not to say negative things. It's okay to or keep you, that to yourself. You can call in and say the negative thing, which we probably won't air it. So well, that's true, you know. too. So it would be just hashtags, kind of a waste, just kind of a waste of time. Yeah. Uh, also, and we'll, since it's a weekly sort of thing, uh, we'll also ask you to share for this week, since it's a timely and topical thing, uh, share your favorite opening day memories. Friday, Florida State opens up the 2018 season against Xavier at the Hauser. It'll be fun. Three games set, right, Corey? Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Yes. Okay. Yeah, good games, times. Yeah. All right. So solutions based provider, you and I, we, we try to think of solutions. The crazy thing that struck me about this article that we're talking about it. This was posted on CBS sports line, the, the declining attendance at college football, FBS football programs, obviously the, the big boys, if you will. So the whole thing now is like you said, everything's got to be comfortable. You, no one wants to leave the comfort of their own home. It's a crazy world out there. So everything needs to be amenities driven. And Which, by the way, sorry to interrupt, but, but that's what I do. You're not really, but not ahead. really. I'm not sorry at all because I keep doing it. Um, that's kind of how we go. That's how where we are as a society. I mean, everything we do now is all about making it more comfortable. Theaters, like I said, have those recliner seats. Cars are more comfortable than they've ever been. They can practically drive themselves. This groceries isn't a ba- get delivered to your house. All of it. Yeah. Pub- yeah, they they do that. Literally, they deliver to your house. There's restaurants deliver to your house. That it's all about you know raising the comfortability and it's not a bad thing like i said last segment for so many years college college stadiums they were huge but they're like hey man thanks for all that money you gave us here's a plank here's a plank of steel (laughs) try to try to fit in there if you can um so they got away on the cheap for a long long time when it came to amenities and now they're competing and they have to find a way to compete and make it more comfortable that's not being soft well, maybe it is. I don't know. But it's also making improvements. The way they did things in 1988 when it came to, you know, taking care of their fans doesn't fly 30 years later, man. You've got to make changes. You've got to adapt. So the question is they're going to have to reduce the seating yeah. so that they can make bigger seats, more comfortable seats, luxury boxes, things of that nature. So I'm not a uh, a business major. Uh, I, I tried, failed at it miserably. Became a political science major, got lost on the way to little law poli school. Sci, little poli-sci, little yeah, poli-sci yeah. action, all right. So what? Dote Campbell at 63000 with luxury boxes is going to generate more revenue than 75000 I mean, what is it, 80000 right now? Maybe under 80000 Yeah, I think but, it was eighty three. I think it's down a little bit because the Champions Club, like so, eighty seventy nine. 79. So 80. I don't know. I mean, so what, 73,000 people... There's oh, less think, money to be made than if... Because I don't know, do people assuming, want to pay more? I don't know, like, that's the thing. You're going to make my experience better, but you're going to make me pay for it. I don't think I'm interested in that. Yeah, I don't think I'm interested in spending $175 even to watch even the Clemson game. I know that's the, that's like the face value right now for a, a, a aluminum plank seat. But I, I guess the point, the, the thing is, in 10 years, if this keeps going down and down, you keep losing 1,400 people every year on average. In 10 years, you're going to be at 63000 anyway. And, and then it's going to be 58000 It's going to be If it keeps going down, you've got to keep, find a way – to make it appealing again. And again, the, the, more, more than anything, if you win games, people are going to come. Alabama didn't have any time, any hard time selling seats. Georgia didn't have much of a hard time this year. Um, so if you win, things are, things are probably going to take care of themselves to an extent. But even if you're really good, man, you might be 90% full. And you want to be 100% full. And I just think, in, you know, in 20, it's not just about where the sport is in 2018. Where's it going to be in 2030? What's what's what are the spending, um, you know, just how are people going to be spending their money in 2030? Are they going to be willing to spend money again to sit on steel planks in 2030? I, I don't know. Well, listen, we, we've heard from people in the profession, the coaching profession, talking about the importance of playing lesser opponents. It, it helps these programs. It helps them sustain. It, it's a payday for Savannah State. Well, it's, Jimbo you know, said, Jimbo oh, was always sh- about that. Well, I know we're not supposed to talk about him, but Jimbo. I'm trying to throw a perfect game here. We're I'd midway already, through the third segment. I'd Corey. already mentioned him on something else, so I, I blew it anyway. Tomorrow Gosh. will be tomorrow will be the perfect game. But he's, Jimbo's the one that always said that. Nick Saban's the one that thinks they should go to nine conference games. Ex- well, and Nick I agree Saban, with Nick Saban. Nick Saban's the one that says it should be Power Five only. Yeah, I agree with that too. So if you reduce. And this is twofold because 
it's something that people don't want to talk about because it's uncomfortable. And then if you mention it, you're either scoffed at, you're called weak, or you're scoffed at. Is is this whole the health aspect of 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 what we're seeing in terms of NFL experience and life expectancy and quality of life after you've had an illustrious career? What happens to you with quote head injuries? I mean, it's it's brain trauma. So. You play less games, so go play a 10 games. And I don't know how this is going to affect the whole this thing. I don't know the whole rotational basis of playing your conference opponents. And this is all the SEC's fault about making a conference title game back in 1991. We were doing just fine without it, but now we have to have conference title games. But if they just go to a 10 game schedule and play nothing but power five opponents. Oh, you're if, talking about just only, no, they're never going to go to 10 games. It's two extra games. They don't, it's all about making money. But if you play. Texas, mm, not, if you, you play you Southern Cal, you if gotta, you play UCLA, you're going to get more. But I if mean, you only have 10 games, then five of them are going to be on the road. So you're only, if they're all conference games, five are on the road, five are at home. Well, right now, Florida State's used to seven home games. You're talking about millions and millions of dollars, not just for the university, but for the community. But shouldn't we look at the big picture of it, that that's what's going to help save the sport oh, well, as then, competitive but, games? And but, it'll, bring, it'll bring people back to the stadium and keep them more engaged whenever... I mean, because that's the beauty of this, right? We're afraid well, that uh, expanding the playoff that we're going to lose the importance of every game. Well, I mean, Mercer, Alabama, and those are Auburn, ridiculous. the games before the Iron Bowl are horrible. They're ridiculous, and the Charleston Southern games are ridiculous. I'm, I think we're not really arguing. I, I think they still should have... I think they should go to nine league games... And then you ha- you also have nothing but e- at least FBS schools, at least FBS schools where you can't schedule, you just can't schedule. Well, then the Florida, and Southern. Florida State schedule is going to be done because then you add Florida and then you're done. That's your ten games. No, and then you add two other schools. You add a no. uh, you add a Northern Illinois and somebody. You can't just have ten games. Well, whether you think they should or not, there is zero chance that that's going to happen because that's too much money lost. It just is. They're not going to give up a home game. None of these schools are are two home games because that's too much revenue. Ten and then maybe eight playoff. No, but that's there's only eight teams that make the playoff, and you're not splitting that money up with everybody. So, to, for everybody to get their money, for Florida to get their money in Miami and Florida State and Arkansas, they got to have their six or seven home games. There's no chance. It'd be like the NFL saying you only get seven home games. You, you just wouldn't do it. You can't do it. They, no owner would agree to that because that's how much revenue loss. That's millions and millions of dollars. They won't do it, and it's all about the money now. They got to figure something out. Or not. Just let it be like this. I mean, just keep losing 1,400 fans a year, and pretty soon you'll be down to 65,000, 70,000 people, which you, is fine, I guess. You can give me a leather chair with a USB plug and Wi-Fi that I can directly connect to and a button to get a girl to bring me a, a, an ice-cold beer. But if you're going to charge me guy. if you're gonna charge me $385 to watch Florida State play Wake Forest, I'm not doing it. Well, yeah, I'm not doing it. Yeah, I mean, I maybe I'm you, maybe I'm broken poor. I don't know. I'm not doing it. You you pay for the season tickets, so you know you're not just paying for a Wake Forest game. You're also paying for the Clemson game. But yeah, man, I mean that's just how that's how it is. People this year are going to pay eighty five dollars to watch that Wake Forest game. That's a lot, but they're also paying a hundred. That also gets them in the door for Clemson. I mean, that's just part of the deal of season tickets. It's what what what's bothersome just moving forward with the sport. And like I touched on in the last segment was, man, I just. You have to figure out a way to to sustain these coaches' salaries. If they they're just out of control, they are flat out out of control. It's it's nuts, and it's only been in the last ten or twelve years that they've become. They, they're just I don't know how else to say it. They're out of control. So you know it's like you know it's a supply and demand economy. I guess you can't cap it. But although they although they do cap stuff in the NFL, they cap stuff in the NBA. But for whatever reason, you can't cap coaches' salaries. So you got to find ways to make money, and you you do you out. The problem is you you make it harder for your fans to spend money to come watch you play. Yeah, you, you just do. Georgia just did it. A co- they were in the news a couple weeks ago for uh, upping their ticket prices, and the reason they gave to the people their season ticket uh, to their season ticket subscribers holders is we have to we have to offset the raises and salaries for our coaches. So we're we're making season tickets more expensive. Now some people think that's not true that they fudge the numbers. But uh, but that's just the reality, man. Now these days you have to pay PSLs, a private oh, seat license, just to, for the opportunity to we, buy a ticket. How did that happen? I mean, just, you got to pay for these billion dollar NFL stadiums. You have to pay for the opportunity to pay get a ticket. for the ticket. Yeah. Ridiculous. What's not ridiculous is this program. Most of the time, <laughs> most. Of the time. We'll wrap up the show right after this. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting, and now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. 
Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source. Final segment of the day. He's Corey M. Aslan. It's Wake Up War Chant. Again, as always, I, I say thanks, but I, I really appreciate you guys listening to us. It's pretty cool to know that people want to hear me babble and Corey give you good information. I babble, you give the good information. Oh, man, I babble like crazy. Call me Babylon. That's all I do. <laughs> oh, Babylon and Aslan. <laughs> um, almost as cool as the three great properties for the table presents over in College Town, Central Township, Madison Social. You know what to do. Make plans that involve either of those locations. So, Corey, I don't know. Let's just try to land this plane, maybe get some final thoughts on this whole. I mean, we talked about it for like two and a half segments now. Uh, this whole uh, declining attendance thing. The craziest thing that I, I thought about the article was so the solution here is in most of these people's minds, they, Dennis Dodd talked to a lot of folks. Uh, yeah, well, not, we didn't really give solutions. So, what were the solutions that he, he wrote about? Um, He didn't give any either. I mean, basically, oh. the, the whole fact that they're going to make these stadiums smaller and make them. More yeah. accessible, more comfortable, more creature of, you know, it's past creature time for that to happen. Friendly habits or whatever. Yeah. The, the, the re- bizarre thing was that's going to involve actually downsizing the stadiums, which I think a lot of people are cool with. I mean, you know, Neyland and I've been to Bryant Denny several times. Bryant Denny and, and it would always get people in Dothan upset. I'd be, I'm like, Bryant Denny sucks. Bryant Denny's the Death Star. Bryant Denny's just a huge steel concrete structure. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of personality. There's to nothing it. to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, you can fit a hundred thousand people. Cool, but you there's fit a lot of banners in it. Apparently, yeah, that's true. You do need a lot of space for that. So they're gonna have to make everything smaller to make it more friendly that people want to come in there. Then they also talk about how bowl attendance has been sliding. And they're cited on the fact that obviously they're expanding. There's so many bowl games now, but that a lot of these bowl games are actually being held in small venue stadiums. So I'm like, what are we arguing about here then? So the stadiums are too big. We need to make them smaller. That's a solution to help increase attendance. But then bowl organizers are are mad because their bowl games are getting stuck in these smaller venues and it's declining their attendance. I, well, I mean, chasing I think your there's, tail there's two ridiculous. different, uh, Two different sections there is that, you know, get, f- trying to fill up the big house in Ann Arbor is different than trying to fill up the, the godforsaken Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. What, what were we at the the Walk Ons Bistro and Bowl? What was that thing? Independence called? Bowl. Yeah. What would the Walk Ons Bistro, Bistro and, and Bar, Bar Independence, Independence Bowl. Bowl? It's hard to fill that thing up. It's just hard because of the the opponents, the location, the temperature, all of it. So bowls are a little bit different um, than I would say a normal. I don't think they're that worried about bowl attendance but, but, because you get the the money with the bowls is the yeah. TV money. But I I think there is there is some genuine concern at every big major football school, save for maybe Alabama, about this attendance drop. I mean, I just think it is. They got it. They're trying to figure out ways to help. They're just trying to. I I don't know if they will. I don't know if it's salvageable because these stadiums are so big and so old. I you know that you can't build a new one. You can't build a new Doak like you, you like Atlanta. Builds a stadium every other year. You can't do that with Doak. That's what you got. And Doak's actually a beautiful stadium. Love it. But, you know, you can't build another big house. Or you can't build another horseshoe or whatever the one in Ohio State is. So I don't know. I don't know what, what's going to happen. And I saw someone on the message boards talk about it could be because of the increasing foreign population at, at universities. So the kids don't value football as much as students don't. But the students aren't the ones that are lying the pockets they're not loading up the they war chest yeah the with, students are the ones that they yeah, so, really are worried about no, and if had, you're good if you're at a football school and you're good that year the students are going to show up no matter what the population is right. well yeah, we'll just be able to tell you know we'll sit down with brady you know when he's in omaha playing in, in game three of the the championship series and we'll just talk to him about well, the good old I mean, days look, when when it, football used to be awesome and a hundred thousand people would go to to Neyland and the big house, and eighty three thousand would pack Doe sure. Campbell. But if Brady's if Brady's in a championship series in Omaha, it ain't getting a game three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Sorry, I mean that's all I'm, I'm saying. Talking, he'll talking he'll out probably. Of school. I can't Sorry. figure out what. I guess he'll bat third, and then he'll close out both games. And he's going to be one of the closers, like a Houston Street, that can come in in the seventh and get you eight outs. Yeah, that's what I'm. Per- he's only nine now. 
So I'm projecting 11 years in the future. Okay. But that's what I see happening. That sounds reasonable. I, I wish I, I should have made him left-handed. I don't know if you can even do that. Can you make kids left-handed? I heard. And just tie the just hand. Just tie the hand behind their back and make them do it. I should have done that. I don't know why I didn't. I'm sure LeVar Ball thought of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, But so, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with the attendance. It's, uh, it's too bad. All right, back to basketball. Let's let's get some more thoughts on that 81-79 victory for Florida State over number 11 Clemson in the process. Again, Leonard Hamilton notches career win number 500. Sort of. Sort of. Okay. He had on. some he had like 20 uh, vacated of them vacated. From Oklahoma State or Miami? From here. Oh, in here. like oh wait, whatever the music class thing was that oh, Bowden Law says. It's the nonsense and we can't we, I don't even I don't even um recognize their unrecognized <laughs> wins. I don't do it. He's at like 521. He won his 500th game last year. He won his 300th for Florida State sometime last year. That's just nonsense to make him do it again. Yeah. Those games happened. They won. Vacating stuff is the most ridiculous punishment anyone has ever come up with. Reggie Bush won the Heisman. He won it. No, he didn't. No, yeah, who did then? Where did it go? Nobody won it that year. That ceremony watch didn't happen. Those games didn't happen. Florida it, State didn't win those. I mean, they didn't win a lot of games in 07. But they didn't win those games in 06 and 07. They didn't win the Emerald Bowl. They the didn't best watch is, that. The best is when you go like on a Wikipedia page, and I think like Saban got some wins vacated one of the first years he was in Alabama, and you're like, oh wow, like he he went five and eight that year or something, and it's like, oh no, like these, you know, the wins. What's are so vacated. crazy about it? Um, not to get too in the weeds, but um, yeah, I, got, I was talking to, like two or three minutes. I was talking now. to Bob Raymond, the FSU track coach. Yeah. They, they had one of their national titles vacated. Right. Number one, the kid that was quote unquote ineligible. Even if they took all his points away, Florida State's team still would have had enough points to win the team title. Oh, so geez. tell me how that works. Right. But he also said, and I think I'm remembering this correctly, it was a while ago, that it was really just the brainchild of this one person that worked at the NCAA that just had this thought, why don't we start vacating wins? That might be the punishment. And they just went, okay, sure. It was just one person, one person that got that ball rolling. It wasn't like a committee met and said, this is what we're going to do. It was one person that had that spark. That all of a sudden cost Florida State a national title, cost Notre Dame the 2012 season somehow, cost Reggie Bush a Heisman. It's all nonsense. It's not recognized. Florida State, sorry, Virginia Tech. Florida State has been to 40 straight bowls or had 40 straight winning seasons and been to 36 straight bowls. You don't have the longest bowl streak because their, their football Twitter feed, Virginia Tech's, right. always corrects people, always, when they say Florida State has a 36-game bowl streak because Virginia Tech would have the longest if they if they didn't recognize – the vacated wins. You know, Florida State's Emerald Bowl didn't count, yeah. according to Virginia Tech. So it's just vacating stuff is just absolute nonsense. Let me just go up to Blacksburg and, and buy one of their players a lunch one day and just and make lunch him pail? ineligible. Give him a, get put it in a lunch yeah. pail? Just make him ineligible, their bowl streak snaps, and then we can just laugh at him. Yeah, good time. Can good I say one. something real quick before we sign off? Um, Does it involve the basketball team? No. The basketball team, great win, really good win. I feel like that win will get them in the tournament. So they, they beat, they'll beat Pitt, we're thinking. and then Should they, beat Pitt, and then they got... Boston College. They got at NC State, at Clemson. Those are going to be very tough games. And then home at Boston College. Win one of those three. Win two of the next four. And I feel like you're comfortably in the tournament. Okay. That's um, all people want. No, that's all. Fine. I think there they're there. Uh, but I just wanted to say that, uh, man, obviously, I, I think I speak for you. I, I assume I do. The hearts go out to what happened in Parkland. I, I, you know, our, our, I, I, I hesitate saying thoughts and prayers because I feel like it's become a cliche now. That's yeah. just what we do. We're so numb to it that that's just our initial instinct and i don't know what can be done i really don't i'm not smart enough i don't know what what we can do in this country i just wish something i just hope something starts happening because it's you know my son's nine he's got seven more years of school to go through and it's really scary what what keeps happening with these school shootings it just is and i and i hope our leaders in this country on both sides can figure out a way to at least try to stop it at least make an effort and see what happens and i don't know what the answers are I, I don't, and I'm not trying to be political. I think we all as Americans can agree that this has to stop. We have to at least try because our kids are getting mowed down in their schools. I have nothing profound to ask other or to add other than um, I agree with you, and, and I would just probably go down a wormhole and, and polarize half the people. And, and one of my friends tweeted this, and he simply said, a part of me wants to tweet out the fact that I don't understand why anybody needs an AR-15, and I know half of you will like it. The other half of you will get upset, and this wheel will just keep spinning. But as you said, hopefully this sparks some sort of conversation that can create a solution to something that's really important. We said you're talking about football, but obviously this is something that's uh, 18, 18 incidents. It's just kind of 18 in this year, just this year since January. And it's, just, it's hard, even at the basketball game, it's hard to, it's hard to really care. 
when, when you know what's going on and, and just the anguish that people have. Um, and it's not – I mean, obviously, I won't even get into the politics of it. It shouldn't be political. Right. We just have to make an effort to try – just try. That's all. Just try. And not just school shootings. People – everybody's getting shot in this country. And I just hope we can do something to to at least curb it and at least show our kids. I can tell Brady – we're trying to make changes. Yeah. We're trying. The, the leaders of this country care about you and are trying, to make, are trying to make changes so this can stop happening. And you can be safe and your teachers can be safe at their schools. Well said. That's a wrap on Wake Up War Chant. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Jeff Cameron coming up at 3 o'clock. Ah, these recruiting updates are nothing but fluff. Are you wasting your time again on free blogs and social media to get the scoop on FSU recruiting? Yeah, it's all bait and switch. Get me excited with a headline, but get nothing in return. You're on warchant.com. What's really going on with FSU recruiting? Could be another top five class, but for the real scoop, you'll need to get your own Warchant subscription. What's it cost? Free. There's a 30-day trial offer. Just sign up and you'll get full access through signing day. And nobody has more accurate and timely information on recruiting than Warchant.com. You know I like free. Sign me up. Warchant.com, your ultimate seminal source.